Hi, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. In this video, we're going to see how we can put a ragged edge around a photo. So let's go over to Elements and get started. I'm using Photoshop Elements 10 in this video. As with most things in Elements, there's usually more than one way to get an effect, and this is no exception. The way I'm going to show you puts your photo into a shape with ragged edges. The first thing I'm going to do is duplicate the background layer by pressing Command-J on a Mac or Control-J on a PC. Now let's look over at the toolbox and select the Cookie Cutter tool. It looks like a star-shaped cookie cutter. Click on it to select it. Next we'll go up to the Options bar and click on the Shape Thumbnail. That brings up a preview of some default shapes. Click on the double arrows in the upper right of the preview window to see the pop-up list of different groups of shapes. We're going to go down and choose the one called Crop Shapes by clicking on it. Now you will see all the different crop shapes you can choose from. I'm going to click on the double arrows again and choose Large Thumbnail from the pop-up list so I can see them better. You can see the names of each shape when you hover your cursor over them. I'm going to choose the one named Crop Shape 11 by clicking on it. You can close the preview window by clicking anywhere in the options bar. Now just click and drag diagonally to create the shape. A bounding box is around the shape which you can use to resize the shape by clicking and dragging on any of the eight handles. And you can also put your cursor inside of the shape and click and drag to move the shape around to different areas of your photo. Place your cursor outside of the bounding box until you get the double-headed uh, curved arrow and then you can click and drag and you can even rotate the shape if you want. And then once you get it the way you want it just click on the green check mark to commit to your changes. That will make a permanent crop of your photo to that shape. But we can always go back to the original state because we duplicated the background layer and made our crop change on the duplicate layer leaving the background layer untouched. In fact, our photo doesn't look any different because our background layer is still showing from under our shape layer. I'm going to refer to that new layer which is called layer 1 in the layers panel as our shape layer. So I'm going to turn off the visibility of the background layer by clicking on the eyeball to the left of its thumbnail in the layers panel. Now we're going to add a new layer below our shape layer so that we can add a background color. Normally when you click on the add a new layer icon in the layers panel, which is this, let me drag this over so we can see it better. It's this icon right here, the square with the dog-eared corner. Normally when you click on that, it creates a new layer above the currently active layer. So I could click on the background layer and then click on the create a new layer icon, but I want to show you a little trick. So I'm going to make my shape layer active again by clicking on it. And if you hold down the command key on a Mac or the control key on a PC while you click the uh, create a new layer icon, it creates the new layer below the currently active layer. So I'll hold down the command key on the Mac or control key on a PC and click. And you can see it added our new layer below layer 1 or below our shape layer. I'm going to switch to the eyedropper tool because I want to pick up that pink color for my photo to use as the background color. So I'll go over to the toolbox and there's the eyedropper tool. It looks like an eyedropper and I'll click on it to make it active. And now when I put my cursor over my photo, whatever color is under my cursor when I click 
will become the foreground color. So I'm going to put it on this darker pink and click and our foreground color which is down here underneath the uh, toolbox it's this top square you can see that it turned to that pink color so now I can go up to the edit menu and go down to fill layer and click and this dialog box comes up and from the use field there's a pop-up menu and you can choose from anything in there and I'm going to choose foreground color which we just saw is that pink and then when I click OK it fills my new blank layer with the foreground color which is pink and because we worked in layers we still have the original photo intact on the background layer and I have the flexibility to move the shape layer if I want by making it the active layer and using the move tool. So I could click on the shape layer to make it active and then get my move tool from the toolbox and then if I click and drag you know if I want to try to center that a little better in there I can move it around until it looks the way I want it and then let go. And I can also change that pink color to any color I want by making that layer active by clicking on it and then I can click on the foreground color and choose a new color say OK and then go to edit fill layer make sure it's foreground color again say OK and it will change to whatever color the foreground color is I'm gonna undo that because I like the pink much better than the red so I hope you found this video helpful. Be sure to click on the subscribe button above this video and you will be notified whenever I release a new video on YouTube. And if you have any questions or comments on this video, just add a comment on my YouTube channel and I will get back to you. Until next time, this is Rick saying take care.